Hi there, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Blended Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through today's chapter. Today we are starting Chapter 5, Chemical Reactions. When discussing chemical reactions, we have to define a few important terms. The first one, exothermic. Exothermic. Let's break that word down real quick. Exo is the, the prefix exo means to exit or leave or out. So think of the sign exit. Exit means to go out. So exothermic means uh, something is leaving. And what's leaving? Well, the thermic. And thermic is heat. So exothermic means heat is leaving a reaction. Heat is leaving a chemical reaction. In other words, energy is leaving a chemical reaction. How do you know if a reaction is exothermic? It's very, very simple, actually. The, the reaction vessel will get warm. The reaction vessel itself will get warm. It'll give off energy, okay? Because think about this now. You have molecules inside this reaction vessel, and they're reacting, and as they're reacting, they're giving off their energy. Who are they giving the energy to? The surroundings. For example, if you do a reaction in water, you add you know, some chemicals to water, whatever those chemicals are, they give off heat. The, the reaction itself is warm. It's giving off energy. The water that's in the reaction will absorb that energy and get hot. Pretty neat, huh? Uh, you've probably, if you ever lived in the north, you may have gone camping. You may have purchased some of these uh, um, little packets you can buy that allow you to, um, you break the little packet and rub it together. The chemicals inside will mix together and create heat. And you can put, your, put them in your mittens or your gloves. It'll keep your hands warm. That's one way we survive in the north. Um, there's also endothermic reactions, which is the opposite of exothermic. Endo, uh, think of the word enter. The prefix en means to uh, come in. Enter. So endothermic means heat is entering a reaction, or the reactants are absorbing heat so they can do their chemical reaction. Now, um, I mean, you can think of an endothermic reaction as a reaction that causes its surroundings to get cold. In other words, it draws heat into the chemicals from the environment. Uh, you've probably all seen it. Maybe you experienced it when you uh, twist an ankle or something and, uh, as a, on the sports team or something. An athletic trainer will run onto the field with that bag and he'll, they'll, he or she will pop it. You'll, you can see them breaking something and then they'll shake it like this. They'll shake it really hard. What they're doing is they're breaking an, an interior bag with, that's filled with chemicals, causing the exterior bag to fill with those chemicals. And the two chemicals will mix. That's why you shake it. And then the whole thing will get cold because inside of that bag is an endothermic reaction that's causing the surroundings to cool down. And it'll help, you know, take energy away from a swollen ankle or something like that. Now, here's an important concept you have to understand. Heat of reactions. So the difference between the heat of the reactants and the products is called the heat of reactants. And it determines whether a reaction will be exothermic or endothermic. All right, so let's get a look at that in a form of a graph. Um, here we have an exothermic reaction. Exothermic because it's giving off heat. You can see the reactants start at a high energy and end up at a low energy. That's an exothermic reaction because the reaction had to give off heat to do it. This is an endothermic reaction. Because the reactant started at a lower energy, the products ended up at a higher energy. This is an endothermic. The reaction has to absorb energy to make it go. Now, some reactions require what we call a little push, or they require some type of energy input. Now you can see it here. The reactants start here, and they go up this energy hump. They actually go to a higher energy before they go to a lower energy. And this energy hump here, this energy right here, is called the activation energy. The activation energy is the amount of energy you have to put into the molecules to make them react. Anything below the activation energy will cause them not to react. They may bump into each other, do whatever, but they won't actually get to the point where they'll react. 
Here it is in an endothermic reaction. You can see that's the energy of activation or the activation energy as it's known. That's how much energy you must put into the reaction to make it go. Endothermic reactions and exothermic reactions both have an activation energy. Exothermic just means the products are at a lower energy than the reactants. Endothermic means the reactants are at a lower energy than the products. Okay? But they both have activation energy, that energy you must put into the reaction to make it uh, proceed. Now food, food has calories, right? And calories are a way of measuring heat or energy. Now, when we walk outside, we burn these calories, right? Now remember, a capital C calorie is a thousand lowercase c calories, or in other words, a capital C calorie is one kcal, or one kilocalorie. Now, in this chart we can see that carbohydrates are four calories per gram. So if you eat a gram of, of carbohydrate, you're taking in four big C calories of energy. Protein is four big C calories of energy per gram, and fat is nine big C calories per gram. So this is the, um, the energy you can get from food, the energy that the food will provide to you. All right? Okay, now let's uh, work on this problem together. Let's calculate the number of calories in a hamburger that contains 53 grams of carbs, 35 grams of protein, and 48 grams of fat. This is a very simple question. It's just use dimensional analysis to determine how many uh, calories from each uh, calorie source there are, and then add them up to get the total calories in the hamburger. Let's start with blue. So we have 53 grams of carbs multiplied by something. Grams of carbs on the bottom. Calories of carbs on the top. And that'll give us calories from carbs. I'm just going to put carb. All right, let's continue. Let's do magenta. We have 35 grams of protein. Multiply that. We'll put grams of protein on the bottom. And calories of protein on the top. And that'll give us calories and that'll be from protein. All right, let's use um, green. Uh, now we have 48 grams of fat. I'm going to multiply that by, put grams of fat on the bottom, calories of fat on the top, and that'll give us calories from fat. All right. Now let's plug in some numbers here. So we're working with the fat right here, the green marker. So that's nine calories per gram. I got that from here. Let's go to the protein. Protein is right here. One gram of protein is four, K, uh, four capital C calories. Four and one. And then here, here's our carbohydrate data. Again, that's four and one. All right, grab out your trusty calculator, 53. Multiplied by 4 is 212. 35 multiplied by 4 is 140. 48 multiplied by 9, 432. And then add all these bad boys up. And it's right around 7, 780 calories. 780 calories. All right. And that's how you'd calculate how many calories were in that uh, beautiful, delicious, awesome, mouth-watering, very tempting, man, I'm really hungry, hamburger. All right, guys. Uh, this is the end of Chapter 5.1. We'll see you in Chapter 5.2. Good luck and good chemistry.